Here's a quick tip about how you can make gradient materials really quickly. It's suitable for beginners and it can really add some depth to your low poly items and low poly scenes. If you like what I do, then do check out my website for my in-depth courses, or you can check out the playlists on this channel and in the description for more great content. So I've got some trees here with that exact effect. They've got a darker color at the bottom than they have at the top, and it gives the illusion of sunlight shining down on them. It's often used for the first stage of hand painted textures. I've got the same for the trunk here, and you can see it's a darker color at the bottom than it is at the top of the trunk. If you keep your eyes on the top tree and I take away the effect, you can see what it looks like with just a flat color. And then when I add the gradient, you can see how much depth it offers. If you want to follow along precisely with me, then you can download this scene, link in the description, or you can just choose any object and follow the same steps. So let's set that up together. So I've set a tree up and it's two separate objects. We've got the top bush here and the trunk here. In the previous one, I had two texture slots and you can set it up like that as well if you understand how to use texture slots, but it works just as well as two separate objects. Just be aware that my object origin is down at the bottom here. It does make a difference as to where your object origin is. So for the trunk, it's down here and for the bushy part, it's down here as well. If you need to move your object origin, you can shift right click to move the 3D cursor. Let's say I want it at the bottom of my bushy part here. I can then right click, set origin, origin to 3D cursor, and it's now at the bottom in this position. Now it doesn't matter where you have your origin, but it's important to know that the origin is important for this effect. For the bushy area at the top, I'll add a new material. And generally for low poly objects, I give them a higher roughness, but that's just preference. The first part of the material we need is the texture coordinates to tell Blender how we want the material to be mapped to our object. So Shift A to add, it's under input and texture coordinates. And I can put that at the front here. And I'm going to use the object texture coordinates. When I plug it into the base color, you can see that it's giving vector information or information on the position of the object and it's being converted to colors. And you can actually see there's already a bit of a gradient coming from the object origin. So how do we control this? Well, we need a separate XYZ node or XYZ node if you're American. So Shift A to add. Under Converter, we've got Separate XYZ. Do remember you can also search here as well. If I click on that and press Separate, there's Separate XYZ as well if you get lost. And I can plug that into my noodle. So I'm going from the object to the vector. And then at the moment, it's separating out the X. So if I move around my object, you can see there's the object origin there and it's going white, which is positive X, which you can also see in the Cartesian coordinates up there. That's the positive X and the negative X going this way and black towards the negative. If I change to the Y and move around, now interestingly, it's going up and down. That doesn't make sense because my Y coordinates are here. Now that's because my object itself has some rotation. And remember, we're using the object texture coordinates. If I press N on my keyboard and go to item, you can see it's been rotated 90 degrees around the X axis. So your rotation here is all important for this. We can set this back to zero by coming over to the viewport with our object selected and press control A and apply the rotation. Notice that they all turn back to zero. And we can see now there's the Y axis up there in the green and we're going from black, the negative Y, to white, the positive Y over here. And again, that object origin is in the middle. If I move the object origin, so shift right click to move it further into the center there, right click, set origin, origin to 3D cursor, you can see that line moving. Now, if I plug the Z or the Z into the base color, we should be able to see it going upwards now. And that's what we want. We've got this black and white information now going from the bottom up to the top. How can we control this and give it some color? Well, we use a color ramp for that. So Shift A to add, converter and color ramp. Plug that in. Now I've got more control and I can grab one of these sliders and drag it up. I can make the line a little bit closer by bringing the whites in, or I can change these colors. And do remember also that we can move the object origin into the middle further to create more of a gradient. Or if I zoom into my color ramp here, I can change the way in which this is interpreted. So I think B spline gives it a really slow gradient upwards like this, as you can see there. So I've got more control, but I'll leave it on the default, which is linear. And I'll change this to a greeny color. So I'll click on the slider here, the colors down at the bottom, and I can click the color, move it up in tone slightly and move across to the greens over here. So probably a little bit brighter than that, somewhere around here. And then the whites, I'll change those to a nice light green somewhere around here but maybe bring it down just a touch. 
and we've got that gradient. It certainly needs a little bit of work, so maybe bringing down a little bit here. We can also add points on this as well. So I can add in a new point and that brings a point into the middle and I can bring that up and down if I want more or less gradient there. And I probably need to bring this down a little bit more somewhere around here. So there's a lighter gradient going upwards like this. So we can play with the sliders and add points if we need to, to create the desired effect. So I'll quickly do the same for the bark at the bottom here, create a new texture. As always, I put the roughness up and I can actually go to my bushy green here, select these three, control C to copy, select the bark, control V to paste and move that into position, plug the color in and see what we've got here. Just double check, see if you've got any rotation on your object. I need to apply my rotation, so control A and apply rotation and now we can see it going upwards and then I can come in and start changing the colors to brownie colors like this. Maybe a bit more ready on that one. I'll get rid of the middle for now and set up the end. So somewhere around there. Oh, and that's looking beautiful. So texture coordinates, the separate X, Y, Z into the color ramp, into the base color, and you've got yourself a lovely gradient texture. So thanks for watching and I hope that helps.